Hypothyroidism is a fairly common illness that we see, particularly in women, and especially as we get older. And the problem is, is the thyroid is underactive, meaning it doesn't make enough of thyroid hormone, okay? The uh, hormone that is important for keeping our basal metabolic rate, burning calories where it should. When, when our levels of, of thyroid hormone are too low, the symptoms we see are fatigue and sluggishness. A lot of the time we're sensitive to cold, may have dry skin, be hoarse. Cholesterol may go up, our weight will go up a little bit. We may have some aches and pains and some weakness in our muscles. And a lot of people become depressed. And really, it's, it's, it's a physiological thing that's related to the level of T3 and T4, which are the hormones that are made by the thyroid gland under the supervision of the hypothalamus, which is in the brain, and the pituitary gland, which is at the base of the brain. And there's an interesting relationship between the thyroid stimulating hormone, better known as TSH, which is made by the pituitary gland, and by the thyroid gland itself, which makes the hormones T3 and T4. When the levels of T3 and T4 are too low, that signals to the, to the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland uh, by mean, uh, to, to regulate uh, its production of, of TSH because when levels are low, TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, will go back down to the thyroid and tell it to make more T3 and T4. So it's an interesting biochemical endocrine feedback system. Now, when we have hypothyroidism, the kinds of symptoms we see are goiter, which means a large thyroid, and in some areas where there's iodine deficiency, uh, and this was a common thing until we iodized our salt, uh, you could see people who had huge thyroid glands, and that was an attempt of the thyroid to try and become bigger to make more thyroid hormone, but in the absence of iodine, which is needed to make T3 and T4, it wasn't going to happen, and that's why you see goiter. Other things that you see as part of hypothyroidism are a high LDL cholesterol, depression as we talked about, slow thinking. A lot of people have peripheral neuropathies. Uh, and in advanced cases, there's a condition called myxedema, which is really an emergency. It's a medical emergency. And their thyroid hormone levels are so low that if you don't treat it just right with small amounts of, of thyroid hormone, you can get into lots of problems with adrenal stress and insufficiency. And some people also who have hypothyroidism have problems with infertility and, and then, of course, with birth defects. Now, the thyroid test, the T3, the free T3, the free T4, which is the, the actual levels of those hormones, and the TSH sometimes don't accurately reflect hypo or hyperthyroidism. In those cases, when we're suspicious on clinical grounds alone because of some of the symptoms we see, we might be inclined to give a trial of a little bit more thyroid hormone and see what happens. If you want to be more scientific about it, there's a test called a bioenergy test that is actually quite accurate in measuring the basal metabolic rate. The basal metabolic rate is something that was measured year, actually probably 100 years ago we're in the process, when we were in the process of trying to find a way to diagnose people with hypothyroid. And basically what we do there is we put people in the morning who are fasted uh, in a resting position where we measure their oxygen consumption and CO2 production and based on that we can tell what, how fast they're burning, uh, they're burning, they're making calories and burning energy. If the level is too low, we know that you're hypothyroid. If the level is too high, we know that you're hyperthyroid or overactive thyroid. This test is the gold standard. And in cases where we really are not sure what we're dealing with, uh, what we do is we measure this bioenergy test that measures the basal metabolic rate. So hypothyroidism is a fairly common condition. It can be uh, measured in clinical practice by doing the blood test that we, we mentioned. And if you have the symptoms that are consistent with it, you may want to see your doctor. You may want to search some of the items that we talked about on the site particularly the bioenergy test, which I think is one that's very much underutilized in clinical practice.